All right, so today for our second part, we are looking at um, radical operations with addition and subtraction. We're looking at radical operations with addition and subtraction. So if you are adding polynomial functions together, what do you have to have in order to add two terms together? They have to be what? Like terms. Like terms, which means they have to be to the same powers or exponents. So x cubed and x squared, like terms, not like terms. Okay, x to the 6 and x to the 6. Uh, yes. Radicals are the same. So like the square root... of 3 and the square root of 2 are not like terms. You cannot add them together to get the square root of 5. The square root of 3 plus the square root of 2 is not the square root of 5. The square root of 3 plus the square root of 2 is not the square root of 5. So you have to take that into account as we work through our problems. So radicals can be added and subtracted in the same manner as monomials. The only way we can add and subtract them together is if they are like terms. To add, I just turned it off so it's subtract right now. I'm just messing with to you. add or subtract radicals, they must have the same index. So remember, the index is the nth root term. So like cube roots can add to cube roots, but cube roots can't add to square roots. And they must have the same radicand, a.k.a. the number inside. So square root of 3b and four square roots of 3b. Like or unlike? Like. Okay, so that means that this is really able to be added or subtracted. How do we do that? Square root of 3b and cube root of 3b, like no. or unlike? unlike. Uh, Why are they not like terms? Because it's a cube root and a square root. Okay. The next ones are unlike too. Good. I would add them. If the first example we're adding, It'd be like 1 square roots of 3b plus 4 square roots of 3b. Five yeah, if they were being added. But it didn't like say add or subtract. So. so here's the thing. You look at this and you immediately say, okay, 4 square roots of 8 plus 3 square roots of 50. You want to be like, unlike. Because oh, it's 8 and 50. But just like polynomials, you have to get it down to simplest form. So the square root of 8 reduces to what? Square root of 8. What? Yeah, so the square root of 8 can become 2 square roots of 2, and 50 can become what? 5 square roots of 2. Good. Because it's really 25 times 2, the square root of 25 is 5. So now they both have square roots of 2, so they become like terms. But you have to multiply your coefficients together first, so you get 8 square roots of 2 and 15 square roots of 2, giving you 23 square roots of 2. Five square roots of 12 plus two square roots of 27 plus the square root of 128. So 12 becomes good. 27 becomes three square roots of three. 128. Okay. Well, it does. It still simplifies. 
it's 8 square roots of 2 because it's 64 and 2. I mean, crap, square root of 64 and square root of 2, which becomes 8 square roots of 2. So even though you say, like, it doesn't work, yeah, okay, it's not a like term to the other ones, but you still need to simplify it. So 5 times 2 is 10, 2 times 3 is 6, so you have 16 square roots of 3 minus 8 square roots of 2 in simplest So multiplying radicals with the distributive property. Just like we can add and subtract radical monomials, you can multiply radicals using the FOIL method. So again, they have to have like terms to multiply them. So you have 2 square roots of 3 plus 3 square roots of 5 times 3 minus the square root of 3. When you multiply the same square root by... Or just 1 divided by 2 plus... Just write down at the bottom of your like, page, sorry. So just I wonder if I lost like a page when I photocopied them. No, we're going to do them. I just think like a page got lost in the copy machine. No. Every once in a while, the coffee machine eats my packets when I make them too thick. Like it misses a page. We are going to foil. We are going to foil, yes. Genius, Keegan. So, first, 2 times 3 is? So you get 6 square roots of 3. Outer. The square root of 3 times the square root of 3 becomes? Number of 9. Yes, the square root of 9. But what's the square root of 9? Okay, so negative 2 six. square roots of 3 times negative square root 3 negative six. becomes negative 2 times 3, which is negative 6. 3 square roots of 5 times 3 becomes 9. And 3 times negative root 3. Do I have any like radicals? Yes, we do. Yeah. So we're going to combine them. So you have 3 square roots of 3. Which is greater? 9 square roots of 5 or 3 square roots of 3? 9 square roots of 5. So should we push out one first? You can, but it doesn't matter. There's not like an ex it's all like exponents. How do you get the last term? Because Sorry, that should be a fifteen. Oh, okay. Sorry. Wait, so then it's they're not like terms. Sorry, sorry, sorry. You're messing me up. I know. You, you will too. Fifteen, and then that's just the final answer, right? Yep. Yeah, we played some wiffle ball. Foil the next one again, and then we'll probably have to rationalize oh, yeah, and once. Yeah, you have to write this one down. You have to write these two examples down. The middle page got lost in the copy machine. So just write them at the bottom of your page. 6 times 2 is 12. 3 times 5 is 15. Here, where are you? 6 times 4 is 24. 3 times 2 is 6. 10. Negative 10. Square roots of 5. And negative 20. Square roots of 2. Can you simplify 15, 6, 5, or 2? No. No. So we leave it as is. If you have 
a fraction. So now that's going to be your tough ones. If you have a fraction, it is going to be just like the complex conjugate. So when you add like 3 minus 4i in your denominator, and you needed to get rid of the i's in the denominator, yes. you've multiplied by... So you plus 4i. Yes. So in the case of these problems, we are going to multiply by 3 plus or minus whatever the square root is so that you can get rid of the radicals in the denominator. So that is what we call the conjugate. Conjugates are used to rationalize denominators. So if you have a squared to b plus c squared of d, you're going to multiply by a squared to b minus c squared of d. This is a variation of what FOIL in reverse technique that makes a special oh. factor. Oh, isn't that oh. Difference of squares. I'm just say that. <laughs> so you have 1 over 2 square roots of 3. So what is the conjugate of that? 2 minus square root of 3. And then now, this is why we did the multiplying ones, you have to FOIL. But what's nice about these ones is you set them up that the OI of FOIL is always going to cancel out. There you go. So we don't have to write them, do we? So first is 4 minus 3. So you get 2 minus root 3 over 1. Because the two square roots of three positive and the negative two square roots of three cancel. Now, this one's written backwards. So this is equivalent to two negative one plus square roots of five. So your conjugate needs to be negative one minus the square root of five. Now you're going to multiply. So you have 2 times the quantity negative 1 minus root 5 over a negative times a negative is a positive. Outer, inner, cancel, because that would be plus square roots of 5. Minus square roots of 5, a positive times a negative is a negative. Root 5 times root 5 is 5. Wait, why is it a negative 4? Why isn't it square root of 25? What's the square root of 25? 5. Oh, it's just 5. Now you have negative 2, negative 2 square of 5 all over negative 4. Technically, if you did it the other way, you would just not have those negatives, or you could take out a negative. So you get 2 plus 2 square roots of 5 all over 4. And if you really want to get fancy, you can take out the GCF, and that's 1 plus the square root of 5 all over 2. Your homework, I'm hoping, is correct. It's like the front and back of the next page. Uh, it was two, three, four pages, so just four pages. Yeah, yeah. 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 it's just that's 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 that's